The next area, which will conclude for us, Karbala and Messianism. The Shia, many people see them straight away and say, the people of self-flagellation, true? How many of you see the images? Blood everywhere. And it's understandable if there are a group of Muslims who come out there and say, look at these barbaric animals who are self-flagellating themselves and coming forward and hurting themselves and putting pain on themselves. First and foremost, it's ironic those who come forward and attack the Shia for their love of Hussein, considering I think we can go Muharram after Muharram with many of those who claim to love the grandson of the Prophet not listening to one lecture on his life the whole year. And I'm certain of that. In Syria, the Mufti of Syria, who's a friend of mine, who's someone I had lectured for within Syria, and I've been to that area, himself gives a khutbah where he says, why have they not told us what happened at Karbala for years? What do you think on the Friday prayer in Saudi Arabia on the 10th of Muharram? They're going to talk about what happened to the grandson of Muhammad. They're going to talk about fasting on Ashura, how the Prophet learned from the Jews how to fast, and how the Prophet said, I've got a greater right than Moses has. Let's fast on Ashura. How ironic. The grandson of Muhammad dies on the 10th of Muharram, and Muhammad's own followers find it hard to remember him. Because of what? Because of self-flagellation? Forget those who self-flagellate. Ask yourself that when the Prophet tells me about Hussein, and I go every year without listening to a single lecture on his life, am I really honoring the grandson of the Prophet Muhammad? So how about those who self-flagellate themselves? It's not part of Shia doctrine. It's a cultural act. Does culture have a place within Islam? Yes. Unless culture breaks law. What do I mean? When the Prophet came to Arabia, there was some Arabian culture he didn't even change. Arabs for four months in the year wouldn't fight each other. Muharram, Rajab, Dhul Qa'da, Dhul Hijjah, true? He saw no need to change that. You should keep those four months and there should be no war. Then there were other things in Arabian culture which were seen as being bad. For example, burying your daughters alive. That was not allowed. When you honor Hussein, the Shia who honor Hussein, number one, normally do it. I'm sure many of you have seen. Normally there are 10 lectures in that first 10 nights. Do you agree? I'm sure some of you may have come across. Most mosques have 10 lectures in those first 10 nights. Is that allowed? you? Of course it is. Any lecture which reminds you of the Holy Prophet's family is allowed in Islam. There's not a single Muslim who denies that. Number two, some of them come forward and beat their chests. Is that allowed? Where does it stem from? Some say it stems from the granddaughter of Muhammad by the name of Zainab, who slaps herself viciously when she hears the news of her brother's martyrdom. Others say, no, it's a cultural act. You'll see them walking and going like this. When they go like this, there are extremes to it. There are some who rip off their shirts and go out publicly and do it. Is that what the scholars tell them? No. In every school in Islam, there are certain bands whose culture outweighs their religion. And however much you'll try and tell them that there are certain actions which are going a bit extreme, they won't listen to you. There are some who use chains and hurt their backs. There are some... How many of you have seen the following sight of getting a sword and striking your head? The scholars come forward and state, you are harming yourself, it is haram. But unfortunately, what the scholars state sometimes goes in one ear out of the other. And that if you now come and tell someone that you are flagellating and it's wrong, they will not listen. But the basis of the message which the majority of the Shiites follow is the message of understanding Hussein and the messianic role because Hussein was martyred in Karbala and his martyrdom according to the Shiites will be avenged by the Mahdi the Mahdi being the Imam of the Shiites the 12th who went into occultation